We made it through Psalm 55 last week. We're going to start in Psalm 56. Here, David is in a pretty good spot of despair because he's been running from Saul. And he flees to the uh, Philistine city of Gath. So we can line that up with some scripture. Um, he didn't get a very good reception once they figured out who he was. And he pretended to be insane, scratching at the gates and foaming at the mouth to get out of there. And uh, you can read about that in First Samuel 21, verse 10, through First Samuel 22, verse 1. We won't, we won't read that. Y'all do that for homework. And Psalm 34 also came out of uh, this same experience. Um, it says to the chief musician <laughs> upon the Jonath Elim Rechokim. And if you look that up in the Strom's, it's like four different words put together um, it means the silent dove in distant places so it was probably the name of a well known tune or melody to which the psalm was to be sung but there's no no definite on that uh, and it's a mictum of David when the Philistines took him in Gath um, a mictum, nobody's really sure what it is. Um, one of the things I found said it was a psalm precious as stamped gold. And if you kind of read through here, there are several mictums we're getting ready to, to read this morning. And if you read through here, some of this was pretty dark times. So, you know, if you... Uh, if you see some uh, dark clouds on the horizon, you know that a storm's coming usually. You know, but even if you're in a storm, God's still there. You know. And he's with you. Hmm. It says, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresses me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me. O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. You know, Saul had commissioned men to kill David. And uh, <clears throat> so, I mean... You know, he's running for his life. Huh. Verse 4 says, in, you know, he's saying, he's admitting, he's afraid. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Well, that's a whole lot easier said than done, you know. Uh, Matthew 10 and 28, which is Jesus speaking, says, And fear not them which kill the body, uh, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Speaking of God. That's the only fear we're supposed to have. But that's easier said than done. You know? Um... Verses 5 and 6 says, Every day they rest on my words. All their thoughts are evil against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Hmm. You know, when we find ourselves being fearful... You know, we need to remember that if you're a child of the king, he loves you. You know? Um, 
and he's in control. But now it may not always turn out the way we'd like it to turn out. And I think back to Stephen. Um, you know, that's in Acts 7, uh, verses 59 and 60. Um, Stephen's being stoned here, and he's asking God not to charge them with this sin. Our deliverance may not always be what we think it's going to be, but I've told Sister Peggy many times, when push comes to shove, I'd rather them meet Stephen as Keith. You know, but God was there with Stephen. I mean, read the account. And he gave Stephen whatever he needed to get through that mess and pray for those people killing him. I don't you know, that's, that's the kind of testimony I'd like to have. But fear is dangerous. And I didn't look it up how many times it says fear not in the Bible. Fear can make you do some totally out of character things. But 1 John 4 and 18 says there is no fear in love. Easier said than done. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, I have a great respect for Stephen and even greater for respect for God, what he did for Stephen there. Um, you know, you know Paul thought about that the rest of his life. Had to. Um Verses 7 says, Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is with me. This, uh, this tears in a bottle, and you can read a, a little bit of an account of this in Malachi 3 and 16. It's, it's a sign of remembrance. Um, in ancient times, in ancient Rome, people, as the funeral procession was going through the streets, they would collect their tears in cups or jars, and uh, when that person was, the deceased was, buried, they would bury those cups and jars full of tears with them as a sign of love and respect. But tears in a bottle here is a sign of remembrance. Hmm. So if we read that with that in mind, thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. There it is again. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living? Mm. Romans chapter 8, verses 31. Uh, Paul saying, if God be for us, who can be against us? Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 no, we won't turn there I'll just, you can read it it says this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh you know salvation is a, is a it has three tenses really it has a past, a present and a future um the past separates us from the penalty of sin. That's justification. 
The presence separates us from the power of sin. That's sanctifying ourselves. And that's a choice. That part of it. And the future tense of it separates us from the presence of sin. When we get to heaven, there will be no sin. Glorification. When we get our glorified body. Hmm. Justification. And you can and you can you can study this out. Justification is uh, you have been saved. Sanctification is I am being saved. And glorification is I will be saved. It gets deep. But it's a it's a process. Um, we're saved from the penalty of sin, but we're not God where God wants us to be. You know, he wouldn't give us all this if that was all there was to it. You know, sanctification. Um, some takes, sometimes I make pretty good process in the sanctification process. And other times I tear down a lot of that progress because I'm ignorant. <laughs> Human. Um, it's a process. Past, present, and future. Anybody got anything before we go to Psalm 57? Okay. You can tie this directly to 1 Samuel chapter 22. It says, To the G chief musician on the Altuskith, a Mictam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. Uh, and the, the name of the cave is Adullam. A-D-U-L-A-M and that's in 1 Samuel and Altakith means and it's, it's a couple words put together it means do not destroy and it says perhaps a title or a melody uh, to set the psalm to I, nobody knows for sure at least nobody that I read about anyway and it's a mictum a psalm as precious as stamped gold I like that. Verse 1 says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities uh, be overpassed. Easily said. Easily said. A little harder to execute. I will cry unto God, the Most High, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up, Selah. Think on that. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Mm. Mm. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. My soul is among lions. What else is compared to a lion in the Bible? That'd be Satan. <clears throat> I don't know. Nothing, don't read too much into it, you know. But if you go on down here, it says, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Well, it's talking about gossip here. Tell Baron, they were trying to tear down David's character, which is what gossip will do. Um, hmm. Proverbs 20 and 19 says to stay away from tell bearers or gossipers. Stay away from them. And I just did a quick count. There was 22 references about gossip. And it said, don't do it. Um, now, there's times that you have to talk about things, but you don't have to spread them around. And there's uh, times that uh, I do very well at that. Um, 
just yesterday, matter of fact, I had a, and I'm not tooting my own horn, it's just a, I had enough of the Lord in me to do all right. A guy was talking about something, and I started to open my mouth. I said, mm, you know what? I know something there, but I believe I'll keep my mouth shut. Um, my dad always told me, if you can't say something good about somebody, just keep your mouth shut. You know? Right, right. So, you know, I feel that person was just trying to stir up some stuff. And thank the Lord I was smart enough not to participate that time. Um, but, yeah, don't do it. Don't tell bear. Don't gossip. Um, don't believe none of what you hear. <laughs> but, you know, that has tore many churches apart. You know, not good. Pardon? What Brother Tony's saying is he's old enough to have learned a few things. Not that he has not participated in uh, doing it, but he's saying that uh, if you're not directly involved in the situation, then you really don't know what the truth is. So you're better off just to be silent. I can't, I was trying to remember. Tony says to find the song the rumor mill. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see here. Hmm. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Boy, if we only let that happen. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me in the midst there, whereof they are falling themselves, Selah. So he's turned it over to God, David has, and the traps they've set for him, they got caught up in him themselves. Um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Like I said, it may not always work out like we'd like it to. And uh, you can use Stephen as a prime example there. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't want to be stoned, but if that's what the good Lord wills, that's what we'll have, I reckon. David says in verse 7, My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. And this fixed here is to be firm, stable, established, fixed, or fastened. He's set, you know. Um, a lot of times we'll set out and we're set. It ain't too far down the road. Our fasteners done loosened up. David said he's fixed. Um, you know, and this has happened before he became king of Israel. He was anointed by the prophet. So... He knows what his end is to a point, but boy, he's, he's looking out what's around him. He's not sure how he's going to get there, but he's trusting in God. My heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Mm. 
It says, Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and heart. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. You know, and this has to be true in verse 9. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Because God decided to put this hymn book in the book. Because the book of Psalms is a hymn book. That's, that's Israel's hymn book. So God decided it needed to be in here. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Shoot. There's a third day sings a song, something like that. Thy love, O Lord. Anyway. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. If we only let that take place um, as a people. Anybody got anything before we go on to 58? You know. <laughs> this is an imprecatory psalm. Um, it calls, it's calling God to action to do dark things against his enemies. Not only David's enemies, but God's enemies. These people that are hunting David are rebels. God has anointed David king, but Saul don't like this. So they're in open rebellion against God here, if you look at it from that point of view. Um, so it's an imprecatory psalm. To the chief musician, Altus Kith, like I said, means do not destroy, perhaps a title or a melody set to a psalm. Uh, and it's a mictum also. Psalm precious as stamped gold. And he's asking them a question here. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? And that could be asked of us, not just them. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Mm, well, our court system could handle some of that, couldn't it? Yea, in the heart ye work wickedness. You weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Hmm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Well, that's true for everybody born of a woman. You know? We're born into sin. Um, I don't. Does anybody remember when they were born? I don't. I mean, I don't want to. I bet that was a violent thing coming out of your mother's womb into the planet Earth. Oh, Lord, ain't no wonder they all cry. You know? <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Yeah, boy. But, you know, we're born into this sin nature. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Who else is compared to a serpent? Satan. Like I said, don't read too much into that. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of the charmers, charming never so wisely. Oh, so they're they're like a poison. They don't uh, they don't listen to anybody. They're not accountable to anybody. But me and Sally was listening to a preacher talking about that on the way to church. If you have no accountability to anybody and you make up the rules as you go along, Lord, what do you end up with? You know? So, now he's calling for some uh, uh, <laughs> destruction here. He's saying, break their teeth, O oh God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O oh Lord. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be uh, cut in pieces, be as cut in pieces. Hmm. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. And uh, 
I read that and I'm like, a snail that melted. I know, sure, everybody salted a snail in their lifetime, surely. You know, but over there, there is a worm called a slime worm and direct sunlight just melts it. It don't dry up, it just goes away. So, oh yeah. It's pumping out that mucus to get that salt off of it. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. I mean, this is some serious stuff he's asking for. Like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. And he's saying, if this happens, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And washing your feet in the blood of the wicked don't make much sense to us. But after a, uh, a battle, they would walk the battlefield picking up booty. And their feet would be covered in blood because they wore sandals. They didn't have combat boots. Um, but that's where that term comes from. Uh, so the, the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So when the wicked are conquered destroyed, done away with. He's going to wash his feet in their blood, picking up the booty. And a lot of people, you know, I, I read some comments on some of this. A lot of people were having a hard time with it. But all David is asking God to do, he's not asking him so much to do it for himself. He's asking God to do this for his good name's sake. Take them on out, Lord. They're, they're messing things up. For you, which it's a good thing that God uh, and, and God did take care of business there. Maybe not for the way David wanted it done, but you know, just think the justification God would have had him doing the same to David for bringing reproach on his name. Think about that. Be careful what you ask for. You might have to the judgment that you were judged with. You might get judged with. Hmm. So that a, that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. Hmm. Anybody got anything before we go to 59? Right. Brother Tony said another way to put it would be David was asking God to set things right here. Um. Psalm 59, you can tie directly to 1 Samuel chapter 19. It says, To the chief musician, Altiskith, a mictam of David, when Saul sent, and they watched the house to kill him. Now, y'all, I mean, I forget this sometimes as I read this, but Saul was David's father-in-law. I don't need any kinfolk hunting me. You know, but... It was his father-in-law. Um, says, deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression nor for my sin, O Lord. Without cause, these people are doing this to me, Lord. But David is not... Telling, asking the Lord to give him the power to do these things. He's asking God to do them. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me and behold. Though therefore, thou therefore, O Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen, be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Ooh. Merciful shall obtain mercy. I'll take it. Selah. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouths. Swords are in their lips. For who, say they, doth hear? But thou, o Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. For God is my defense. 
The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power. And bring them down, O Lord, our shield. He's asking the Lord to do this so that the people can see what's going on. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying which they speak, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Selah. Well, there's coming a day when there will be no doubt that there's a God. And I hope a lot of people figure it out before that day. And at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go around about the city. And he's talking, and then I, you know, it's been in here twice, so I kind of read on it a little bit. And making noise like a dog is a running around the city ravenous because of hunger. Um, was the only thing I could find there. It says, let them wander up and down for meat. So that makes sense if you tie it to that. And grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Can you imagine how much trouble that we have not seen because of God is our defense? What he has prevented us from going through. Um, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble unto thee O my strength will I sing for God is my defense and the God of my mercy anybody got anything before we go to 60 we'll get that one knocked out yep that's what it says Right. 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 This is Old Testament versus New Testament. Um, you know, then we may have to go over that sometime, the Beatitudes. Jesus changed a lot right there. You say this, I say do this. You know, he changed some things. Um, yeah, boy. Hmm. Okay. Psalm 60. Uh, the background here is David was winning battles and making a name for himself fighting in the north. And, and they were fighting uh, the Aramaeans, which we know as the Syrians in the north. So while he was up there doing this thing, the Edomites attacked from the Israel from the south, and they did a lot of damage. Um, there's actual historical accounts of that, secular historical accounts. Uh, so David sent Joab as part of the army who defeated Edom, and they never came back from that defeat, uh, in the Valley of Salt, south of the Dead Sea. Um, you can read about that in 2 Samuel chapter 8, verses 1 through 14. Chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. And then 1 Chronicles chapter 18, verses 1 through 13. And chapter 19, verses 6 through 19. Uh, To the chief musician upon Shushanadoth, which I have no idea what that is. I can't find, I couldn't find much of nothing on it. It's a miktam of David to teach when he strove against Aram Naharamim uh, and with Aram Zobah when Joab returned and smote of Edom in the Valley of Salt, 12,000. So he, they don't know what they killed 12,000 Edomites in the south. It says, O God, 
Thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O oh, turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble, thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Like I said, that attack in the south, it caused some damage. And it, uh, when the news hits them, uh, it shook them up a little bit. It says, Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. So he's reminding God here, Selah, that thou beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and hear me. I like that. That thou beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand and hear me. Who sits on the right hand of the Father? Jesus. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. God's saying here, I mean, he's, you know, these cities belong to God. Okay? That's what he's saying. They're his. So, but, <laughs> I love this. It says, Moab is my wash pot. Mm. So Moab is... Uh, He's throwing out his wash water, wastewater. That's, that's where he disposes of his wastewater in Moab on the Edomites. Um, over Edom I will cast out my shoe. That is an insult to uh, people of that area. Philistia, triumph thou because of me. <laughs> he, he's already, uh, he's saying here that uh, God's more powerful than any of their enemies. Um, and he uses them as he wishes. If he has to use them to get Israel to pay attention, he will. And he uses things <laughs> for get our attention as well. Let's see here. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Who knows what's in Edom? Petra. Anybody ever done any reading on Petra? You need, there's some videos of Petra. You need to see. They believe, the scholars, believe that the remnant of Israel in the last days will flee to Petra and be protected. And it is amazing. It is a city cut into a mountain. And there ain't but one little narrow way to it. It has Wastewater cisterns as well as freshwater cisterns, it's an amazing thing to see. Um, but who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, which hast cast us off, and thou, O God, which didst not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. <laughs> Through God we shall do uh, valiantly, for he is it that shall tread down our enemies. I like that. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. You know, there's a lot of times we'll seek man's help when we should be seeking God's help for the first thing. Guilty. You know, guilty. Um, through God we shall do valiantly. For he it is that shall tread down our enemy. That concludes Psalm 60. I guess we're done for this morning. I'd say Vanessa's wearing a spot out in the carpet, pacing the hall. <laughs> Anybody got anything before we close out? All right, take you a break. Get you a drink, whatever. Probably get through Jimmy's.